morning and welcome to Space Station Live here in the International Space Station Flight Control Room at NASA's Johnson Space Center. The Orbit 2 team currently manning consoles, uh, as you can see below you, monitoring all of the systems on board this orbiting complex. The team right now being led by Flight Director Richard Jones. Joining him at the Capcom console is Robert Hanley, serving as the voice communication link between all of our teams down here on the ground and the astronauts up in space. Those astronauts right now are the crew of Expedition 36, uh, drawing from countries all over the globe. They're currently being led by Russian cosmonaut Pavel Vinogradov, a veteran space flyer on his third flight to the International Space Station. Uh, immediately behind him, you can see another Russian cosmonaut, Alexander Mazurkin, a rookie space flyer, and also NASA astronaut Chris Cassidy on his second space flight. Rounding out the crew, the three newer members on board the International Space Station, our third Russian cosmonaut Fyodor Yurchikin there in the front row on the right, and behind him from the European Space Agency, Luca Parmitano, also on his first flight, and all the way on the right there, rounding out the crew, NASA astronaut Karen Nyberg on her second. On board the International Space Station, the normal bevy of maintenance and uh, science experiment work going on. Uh, starting off with Commander Vinogradov, who's moving throughout the Russian segment today, replacing the dust collector filters and uh, a lot of the ventilation ducts uh, on board that segment. He'll also be working with a Russian plasma experiment, uh, which was installed on the external portion of the Zvezda service module during a spacewalk back in April. He'll be activating that today. Uh, the experiment looks to study plasma waves and the effects of space weather on Earth's ionosphere. Meanwhile, his fellow Russian cosmonaut Alexander Mazurkin uh, will be reconfiguring many of the Russian segment systems, uh, particularly the Piers docking compartment, as they continue wrapping up uh, and restoring the Russian segment to normal operating procedures following a spacewalk which took place last week. Um, you can see uh, on the back side of the station there uh, the Russian segment uh, that Piers docking compartment uh, that the astronauts uh, staged. Uh, their EVA out of, uh, one of the only ones without a visiting vehicle currently attached. That'll be taking up most of Mazurkin's day today. Meanwhile, NASA astronaut Chris Cassidy, uh, quite a uh, diverse array of tasks for him today. He started off working on the ARED device, the Advanced Resistive Exercise Device. It's one of the uh, numerous exercise pieces of equipment for these astronauts on board. He needed to uh, replace a key, uh, key rope component inside of the device in order to make it functional for the astronauts again. Aside from that, he was working, uh, doing in one quick test run of the SPHERES experiment. SPHERES standing for Synchronized Position Hold, Engage, Reorient Experimental Satellites. These small bowling ball sized objects that are completely self-contained satellites are used to test various formation flying algorithms and also uh, competitions with students around the country. Uh, these ones in particular that he was working with today, controlled by smartphones flown to the International Space Station, increasing their computing power and uh, adding a functional technology developed on Earth for use in space. Aside from that, he was taking some images of uh, the thermal control system out on the what's known as the TARGE, the thermal radiator rotor rotary joint on the P-1 truss earlier today. Meanwhile, our third Russian cosmonaut, uh, Fyodor Yurchikin, started off his morning taking some saliva and blood collections. Uh, he'll be storing those in a freezer for eventual downlink back down to the ground. Aside from that, he was working on the Coulomb Crystal investigation uh, that's aimed at studying the dynamics of solid dispersed environments in an inhomogeneous magnetic field in microgravity, crystal formations that can be uh, directly affected by uh, changing the magnetic field that they're exposed to. Meanwhile, European astronaut Luca Parmitano spending much of his day today uh, inside of the ATV vehicle transferring some cargo out into the rest of the uh, station storage structures. Aside from that, he'll be working on the environmental health system, uh, taking a sample from the potable water dispenser, and also continuing some work that he and Cassidy will be doing throughout this week as they prepare for their two upcoming spacewalks. Uh, today, the two will be verifying that their EMU or extravehicular mobility units, uh, glove heaters, are functioning as expected, and also that their suit TV is receiving power from the REBA or the rechargeable EVA battery assembly. Uh, the two astronauts scheduled to uh, conduct two spacewalks over the next two weeks on July 9th and July 16th, uh, completing the number of tasks on the external structure of the International Space Station. 
And then our sixth crew member, Karen Nyberg, this morning was installing some alignment guides inside of the combustion integrated rack in order for, to prepare uh, it for some upcoming experiment work. She'll also be joining Luca Parmitano and transferring some cargo out of that ATV vehicle. And finally, she'll be uh, also working with the environmental health system, uh, taking some samples from uh, microbial devices and uh, other uh, water processing assemblies. Так, 200 ом, 200 ом, 200 ом. Есть 4,2 ома. 4,2 ом. 4,2 ома, принято. 4,2 ом, and we copy. Так, только я вот, вы же записываете там, а то я ничего. You are writing it down, right? Because I'm not writing it down. Да, Владимир Ильич, так как у нас связь, мы все записываем. Павел, yes, we are recording everything. You have... You don't have to worry about anything. Okay, 42. 43. And... Uh, so, 3.4 ohm. Okay, we copy 3.4. Moving on through the radiogram. Так, Саш, 3,5, 8,9, как так? 3,5 ома принято. 3,5 ом, we copy. Так, 44, ух ты, что-то здесь. Okay, for 44, it keep, it's, it's, it's erratic. It had spikes up to 94, even 96. Pavel Vladimirovich, it's just a bad contact. Now it's dropping 2.8. 2.8 принято. 2.8, we copy. 2.8, да. Ну, 3.8, да, вот так прыгает здесь. Можно дальше по радиограмме работать? Keep working through the radiogram. Так, 200 киловолт, да? Выбираем 200 киловолт. 200 киловолт. Station Houston on 2 for a rest. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, Chris, you are uh, go to continue with the evac and let us know how that goes with the loads. Um, evac, uh, the uh, a red will still be safe to use. Um, if you're still getting the light loads, please let us know. And we do have another evac scheduled for Friday, but you're welcome to go ahead and press and try to get it better now. Okay, and work, and I'll take SSC 15 for the conference. Great. Thanks for reading my next question. Good deal. Thanks. And Robert, you guys are welcome to the Note 3 camera for a link. Perfect. Thank you. So it's more than 100,000 ohm, I don't understand. Pavel, can you switch the multimeter on button one? Let's just try to do number one, button one, and try to measure. Yes, I have switched, and it shows me exactly one, one um, digit. Okay, we copy. Just one. 
Now, 41. А, вот еще, да, Саша, пока я здесь ковыряю, сейчас контактом, вот там Катерину можно... I'm working with the contacts. Can we talk to Katerina? She is waiting. I'll let her talk to you. I'm giving her the headset because I have. I seem to be having problems with contacts. I am here. Katya. Definitely. I have the problem further down with the insert. I don't think the valves have valves have anything to do with it. So for now, I have assembled the entire schematic, closed all the valves. I don't know what you will tell me. It's the ECOV-1 and 2, they're open. Think about it and tell me tonight. But right now, it's all closed, both sections. So, also, I look at the tube, which consists of several tubes, and so if we move to the end, then we could demace them if we don't cut them, but rather open them, meaning um, unscrew the screws. So we can unscrew the tube and uh, resolve the situation, if, if we're lucky. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Yes, yes, I understand. I understood. Take it all apart. Yes. Because there is a sticky material that that hardens that's been used to stop it to make sure that the screw does not unscrew. So, I'm thinking maybe we could try. Sure. Now I need I need the loop to talk. Sure. Okay. Well, so I've reported. I'm done. Okay. For 10:41, we have one mega ohm. Correction. Going back. It's all wrong. 10:41, and I used 42. Sorry. So one mega ohm. Just one. That is correct. No doubt. 1041, one mega ohm. That's not one. That means it's more than one, and so it's outside the range. Okay. That's correct. Moving on. Four, ten. I think I'm about done. Two and a half ohm. Two and a half. We copy, and that is correct. And then 41, 47. 41, 47, 2.6, 2.5. Ohm. 2.5, um. we copy, moving on through the radiogram. Instead of the range 200 kilo ohm, we use one mega ohm for the range. Okay, I copy and understood. Okay, we copy one. Same thing here. 
No connection, but it's more than one mega ohm. Okay, we copy one. Well, 13, 2.9. Okay, 2.9, we copy. 38, 39, let me see. 2.9. 2.9, we copy. We can consider the procedure completed. Um, thank you for your work. Let's perform the closeout ops. And I will be standing by for our next activity, which is working with the VPA2 fan. Okay? And I took pictures. So I will just give it the same number, but the title is the number of the radiogram. Is that okay? Yes, and I will look at it. Also for channel 2, loop 2, don't worry about configuring it. Fedor says he doesn't need it. Okay, that's fine. We understood. Pavel Vladimirovich. Alexander, this is Alexander. Yes, go ahead. Go ahead. I hope you have not connected, made it the connector yet. No. We have not. A reminder that we have the VDSU deactivation. No, no, I did not touch the connector. So tell me when. When we finish the fan work, we will be connecting them at the same time. The fan connector and the on the PPS. That connector. Okay. Um, that's fine. You've been listening to Expedition 36 Commander Pavel Vinogradov discussing uh, with flight controllers in the Russian mission control in Karyov just outside of Moscow. Right now he's uh, preparing to activate a, an experiment that was installed on the uh, external portion of the Svezda uh, service module uh, back on a spacewalk in April. Uh, the name of the experiment, the Obstankova, um, is a plasma uh, study experiment. It'll be uh, studying plasma waves and then the effects of uh, various space weather conditions on Earth's ionosphere. Uh, right now, uh, Vinogradov has been measuring the resistance on some of the power supply circuits that'll be powering that. And a little bit uh, later, they'll be uh, connecting all the telemetry data feeders to the experiment uh, before getting the final go from the Russian mission control in Koryov to activate.
right here we're getting a live look at one of the experiments uh, running autonomous, autonom autonomously right now on board the International Space Station. Uh, this is known as the Capillary Channel Flow Experiment. Uh, it's helping to uh, innovate the transportation of liquids, uh, for example, fuels and uh, low temperature liquids like liquid nitrogen and water and microgravity. This will help scientists to understand the capillary fluid flow rates uh, in microgravity. So then uh, hardware for future spacecraft and uh, various systems can be developed in order to uh, pump liquids from one reservoir to another uh, without the need for a pump with moving parts. Uh, capillary flow, one of the forces that uh, works in, in microgravity that has a much larger effect uh, with that absence of gravity. Uh, capillary flow does exist down here on Earth, but gravity um, a uh, much more overpowering force. Uh, this experiment hoping to uh, result in some uh, reduced cost and uh, weight of the uh, spacecraft systems and also improved reliability of such equipment, uh, which will make it a, a very attractive technology for future spacecraft. Most of this uh, due to the fact that right now uh, many spacecraft fuel tanks rely on an additional reservoir in order to prevent uh, the ingestion of gas into the engines during firing. Uh, this research hoping to uh, update the current models, which uh, have had some trouble uh, adequately predicting the maximum flow rate achievable through uh, solely capillary veins. This experiment taking place inside of the microgravity science glove box on board the station. You'll see the bubbles come across occasionally. It's uh, actively forcing liquid flows through an open capillary channel. Scientists then uh, changing the, uh, the size and forces of that channel in order to measure how the liquid reacts. As mentioned, this uh, more or less autonomous experiment, the crew uh, only needed to uh, change out the uh, various experiment hardware between sessions. Again, some of the potential applications hope to come out of this experiment uh, would be to enable the uh, design of uh, new spacecraft tanks, which will uh, be able to supply a gas-free propellant to spacecraft thrusters. Uh, all this being done directly through capillary veins, uh, which would uh, significantly reduce the cost and weight and uh, enhance the reliability of any such system. Uh, as usual, the less moving parts needed, the better. The effect of capillary forces uh, on Earth is limited to only a few millimeters. However, uh, in space, these forces uh, can affect uh, free surfaces extending over several meters, uh, that all being due to the lack of gravity.
So this capillary channel flow experiment continuing to run. Meanwhile, the crew in the latter part of their day currently, uh, Karen Nyberg working to transfer some cargo out of the ATV vehicle. Uh, she's been joined throughout the day uh, on much of that by European Space Agency astronaut Luca Parmitano, who's about to move into some of his scheduled exercise for the day. The station itself flying about 257 statute miles just over the uh, east central Pacific. It's going to continue on this northeasterly track, eventually moving out over Mexico and much of the central U.S., uh, passing right over southeastern Texas and across uh, many of the states in the Midwest for moving up over the northeast and out over uh, Canada and the North Atlantic. The station currently in an orbital daytime. These astronauts seen uh, quite a few sunrises and sunsets each day as they're uh, craft travels around the Earth at 17,500 miles an hour, seeing an, uh, a new side of the Earth uh, quite constantly, completing an orbit roughly every 92 minutes. And so some of our future crew members, uh, NASA astronaut Rick Mastracchio and uh, Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency astronaut Koichi Wakata today are doing some spacewalk training inside of NASA's Neutral Buoyancy Laboratory. Uh, we're getting a, lot, a couple of live views in there right now. Uh, these astronauts are uh, scheduled to launch as part of the Expedition 38 and 39 crews. Uh, Mastracchio and Wakata will be launching alongside of Russian cosmonaut Mikhail Turin uh, coming up in November of 2013 on their Soyuz TMA-11M vehicle. Uh, the two right now inside of that NBL practicing uh, spacewalk. All these astronauts will do uh, quite a few runs inside of the 40-foot uh, uh, deep swimming pool practicing uh, all the emergency uh, EVAs or spacewalks that they could be called up to do during an expedition spaceflight. They'll also train for any planned uh, repair, replacement, or upgrade uh, spacewalks that they're uh, scheduled to do during their increments. Uh, two of those coming up over the next two weeks is uh, NASA astronaut Chris Cassidy and European astronaut Luca Parmitano uh, will be stepping outside of the station airlocks on July 9th and July 16th. Uh, they, like Koichi and uh, Rick here uh, trained extensively inside of this neutral buoyancy laboratory, again found out here in Houston at the Johnson Space Center. Uh, the astronauts in the full EMU or extravehicular mobility unit, that's their big white spacesuit that you can see there. Once they're inside this pool, they're weighted so as to be neutrally buoyant so they neither sink nor float to the top uh, while inside the pool. This uh, being done to help mimic the uh, sensation and the effects that they'll feel while working in microgravity. Uh, everything from their suit all the way down to their tools are weighted this way uh, so as to best mimic that environment. And all the astronauts will spend several hours uh, during each run inside this pool supported by uh, many uh, divers uh, as you can see there. Uh, just keeping an eye on the astronauts and also uh, helping them translate across the station structure if necessary or uh, organizing tools. But again, these two training for an upcoming expedition that they'll be launching to the station on uh, coming up in November of 2013. Uh, Wakata will actually be taking over as commander of the station during Expedition 39, uh, the first Japanese commander of the International Space Station. And 
importance of those two training for some upcoming spacewalks and in the immediate future two uh, U.S. spacewalks scheduled to take place over the next two weeks. Milligrams per liter. TIC 721 milligrams, micrograms, sorry, micrograms per liter. And before it was TOC, man, um, less than 285 micrograms per liter. And TOC RSD 5%. How do you copy? Yeah, we copied all, Luca. Very clear. Thank you. Thank you very well. European Space Agency astronaut Luca Parmitano calling down to the ground. A little bit earlier, he was taking some uh, samples from the potable water dispenser inside of the astronaut's environmental health system. Later today, he'll be joined by Chris Cassidy as they continue to prepare uh, their suit and tools for their two upcoming spacewalks on July 9th and July 16th. Today, they'll be uh, checking out the glove heaters inside of the EMUs or the extravehicular mobility units, their spacesuits, uh, verifying that the glove heaters are functional and also that their EMU TV is receiving power from what's known as the REBA, the rechargeable EVA battery assembly. Uh, those two spacewalkers, Cassidy dubbed EV-1, Parmitano dubbed EV-2. Uh, again, we'll be uh, stepping outside of the station airlocks, staging out of the Quest airlock on the U.S. segment. Both spacewalks scheduled to begin at 7.10 a.m. Central Time, 8.10 a.m. Eastern Time, uh, exactly one week apart. And to bring you more information on these spacewalks, we'll be holding a briefing uh, later today on NASA television. Where we'll hear from uh, the lead flight director for both spacewalks, as well as the EVA officers in charge of planning uh, for both U.S. EVA 22 and 23. That'll be live here from the Johnson Space Center at 1 p.m. Central Time, 2 p.m. Eastern. Assistant CC Moscow and Space Dragon 1 for Pavel Vladimirovich. On that ground you can see passing below you, um, the southeastern portion of Texas, the station currently just about halfway in between San Antonio and Houston. Just letting you know. You can make the connectors now. For the PSORM. Pavel Vinogradov getting the go ahead from the Russian mission control to uh, connect some of the uh, fan telemetry connectors. Uh, for that uh, plasma experiment on the external portion of this Vesta service module that he's been uh, prepping for activation today. That experiment again installed um, by two Russian spacewalkers back uh, during an EVA in April. He was testing the resistance on the power supply a little bit earlier, uh, conferring quite extensively with experts down in Koryov, Russia. Uh, right now, uh, finishing up a few connector work uh, items on the task list for that uh, before moving on to some closeout ops, uh, getting the go from uh, the MCC Moscow a little bit later this morning.
this right here is some video that was taken late yesterday as NASA astronaut Karen Nyberg was working inside of the Japanese Kibo module. She was doing some replacement work on the uh, small payload rack inside, uh, cutting a few uh, older cables and replacing them with uh, some upgraded versions. Already removed. Four to J4, I mean, or from J4. And Karen, now you mean that uh, accumulator has already been removed, and you're checking on that? Yes, I just, it looks like. Uh, T4 is already parked, and I just wanted to confirm that that's the configuration you were expecting. Copy that. Your question is that the P4 is, has been already parked or not, so we, and we, we will be checking on that. Station Scuba on Space Grant T4, Karen. Go ahead. All right, we copy that uh, P4 has already been parked to the parking uh, connection point. So we'd like you to disconnect the, uh, we'd like to use the uh, park J4. So we'd like you to disconnect the uh, current connection once and put the connector to the Brew dotted circle point for secure. Okay, copy that. And again, some video from the Kibo module of Karen Nyberg. Yesterday, she was working to replace a few cables inside of the small payload rack. Uh, right now, Karen is working to transfer some cargo from the ATV automated transfer vehicle, uh, currently docked to the International Space Station. And in that short amount of time, the International Space Station already over the northern tip of Maine, about to head over New Brunswick and uh, out over the Gulf of St. Lawrence and over the northern Atlantic Ocean. Traveling from one corner of the country to the next uh, in just a few minutes' time. Uh, the station again moving about five miles a second.
MCC Moscow. Pavel Vladimirovich, have you made a big connector? This is Alexander. I have not made it the connector this time. Do you want me to do it right now? This You were talking about the hot 51 connector, is that correct? For the PPSRM on that panel, you need to connect it again. Okay, in work. You're dropping out, so sorry, but yeah, I'm mating it right now. MCC Moscow, this is ISS. Go ahead, Pavel, we're here. We have made it. I have made it high 51. Okay, we copy. Huntsville stations face the ground two for SAMS. And Chris, Huntsville's with you on two. Good afternoon, just looking for your go to activate the SAMS ICU. And Chris, you have a go and just want to give you a heads up that the light that's mentioned in step one is burned out. So uh, if you notice that, uh, please know that it's expected. Okay, thanks.
getting another look at that capillary channel flow experiment that's continuing to run on board the International Space Station. As mentioned, it's uh, running inside of the Microgravity Science Glove Box, uh, one of the major dedicated science facilities located inside of the Destiny Laboratory. I see that I'm falling behind and uh, it's because it takes some time to figure it all out. I am practically ready at this time. Pavel, have you made it the connector on the PPS? Yes, number 50, yes, I have. That's H919. Yes, that is correct. For the fan. I have a question. Are we supposed to work with it or not? Uh, are we... Do we have time constraints or anything? We have about 20 minutes. So, if we finish this part fairly soon, then we should be okay. Okay, I've opened everything. I don't see a problem. Right now, the International Space Station orbiting over the Atlantic Ocean still. It will soon be approaching the western coast of France. Uh, on board, uh, the international crew of six moving towards uh, the evening part of their day. Uh, many of them getting in their scheduled two and a half hours of exercise. Uh, Commander Pavel Vinogradov continuing to work with the flight controllers and the Russian mission control in Koryov, just outside of Moscow, as they look to uh, eventually uh, finish hooking up a few telemetry connectors and activating that Ops and Kova experiment currently located on the external portion of Zvezda. Meanwhile, Alexander Mazurkin's continuing his uh, day-long task of uh, reconfiguring all the Russian systems over to their normal uh, operating procedures as they continue to recover everything uh, from the uh, configurations that they were placed in during that Russian spacewalk just a little over a week ago. Meanwhile, Chris Cassidy, uh, moving into his exercise periods, he's been uh, working throughout the day on uh, a few different experiment and um, maintenance activities on some of that exercise equipment. He'll also be uh, working to continue to prepare his uh, EMU spacesuit for his upcoming EVAs alongside with Luca Parmitano. Uh, those two scheduled to go uh, on two spacewalks over the next two weeks on July 9th and July 16th. You can see uh, Cassidy will be EV-1, uh, veteran spacewalker, uh, and then Luca Parmentano will be making his first and second spacewalks during these uh, activities. He'll be designated EV-2.
And again, we'll be bringing you uh, an overview and more information on both of these spacewalks live from the Johnson Space Center a little bit later this afternoon. Uh, we'll be joined by David Korth, the lead flight director for both spacewalks, as long as the lead EVA officers for both uh, Spacewalk 22 and 23, uh, Ernie Bell and Karina Eversley. Uh, they'll be briefing uh, what to expect during these spacewalks and also taking questions from interested reporters. And that'll be live here on NASA TV at 1 p.m. Central Time, 2 p.m. Eastern. For the switch, automatic units, I'm not sure. I think the square box near the fan, fan 2, is it. Is that correct? Well, I really can't tell. So you have to follow the cable from M2 Ha1, to make sure, M1 Ha1, I see, Ha1, I see, let me look. Let me look again. I have area 202, read the numbers of the connectors, then I follow the cable to the hot two connector. Pavel, on the picture that's in the radiogram, it should give you an approximate idea where this connector may be, may be located, but I'm worried that it might be outdated, this information. Maybe you could attach... So we're moving towards the end of today's Space Station Live. And just another reminder, we'll be bringing you that spacewalk briefing for uh, both of those upcoming EVAs that will take place over the next two weeks on July 9th and July 16th. That briefing, uh, three participants uh, live from the Johnson Space Center, uh, airing today on NASA TV at 1 p.m. Central Time, 2 p.m. Eastern. So I need to look. Also coming up tomorrow on Wednesday, we'll have an in-flight event uh, from the International Space Station with NASA astronaut Karen Nyberg. Uh, that'll be airing at 10.40 a.m. Central Time, 11.40 a.m. Eastern, again tomorrow, Wednesday, July 3rd, on NASA TV. And as always, uh, immediately following Space Station Live, be sure to tune in to the NASA video file, giving a look at all things NASA from centers around the country, uh, airing next here on NASA TV at 11 a.m. Central Time, 12 p.m. Eastern. So again, the crew uh, in the latter part of their day, uh, the only real major task left for our USOS crew members, uh, Luca Parmitano and Chris Cassidy will be inside of the Quest airlock, continuing to prepare their spacesuits for that, uh, those upcoming spacewalks, which will dominate a lot of their time throughout this week as they continue to prepare. The two, again, stepping out on July 9th and July 16th, uh, two spacewalks in support of the U.S. segment. Be sure to join us again tomorrow uh, for another Space Station Live and a look at life on board the International Space Station. For now, we'll go ahead and sign off. This is Mission Control Houston. Go ahead.